Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is your captain speaking. We are heading towards stormy water, so keep all arms, legs, and other appendages inside the vehicle as we rocket our way through a legacy league. If you give me just a few moments, I'm going to make sure that you and everybody else knows about this awesome stream that's going to be starting soon. You can find out on Twitter, Storm Discord, or maybe I'll give you a text. Who knows? If you give me just a few more moments, we'll make sure that everybody's inside. Oh no, I was muted. Hello everybody, welcome to everybody that was chatting. I was telling you a little bit about my day, but I guess I guess you missed it. Um, it's really too bad. But yeah, I, I mute things after I do the little intro on stream and sometimes I just forget to unmute it. That's all right, that's what you guys are here for. So today uh, we're going to be working on a different Storm deck. We're gonna be playing Ruby Storm, one of the more classic, uh, one of the more classic Storm decks uh, that's a little bit underrepresented. It's not the most uh, prevalent, right? Typically, you're talking about the Epic Storm and Ad Nauseum Tendrils as the two most well-known Storm decks. However, if you pair a Ruby Medallion with a bunch of rituals and card advantage engines, then you get yourself a pretty powerful storm deck. So this is what we're going to be focusing on today. Um, this is actually a list that Bryant ran through a legacy league and 3 2 to that legacy league, recorded a video, posted it on the YouTube about a week ago or so, I think. And this is actually, the, um, I think it's the exact same list. Yeah. Um, so we're going to send it back and see if we can't beat a 3-2. I don't know. Uh, Bryant's a pretty powerful storm wizard, so I've got my work cut out for me. But the, uh, the goal of the deck is to 
utilize Ruby Medallion or Bergy God of Storytelling, which does a, a similar thing <clears throat> to... Uh, yes, we are back to two monitors, Brian. It's fantastic. Um, so this... Um, sorry, yes, I'm getting messages and stuff. Okay, so this deck s seeks to use Ruby Medallion and Bergy God of Storytelling as mana uh, advantage. Uh, you you reduce the spells, the red spells you ca you cast cost one less to cast, one generic colorless, and then with Bergy, whenever you cast a spell, add red, and that mana doesn't uh, go away as steps and phases end in a turn. And then it also has some text about creatures boasting. That's not that's actual literal flavor text. Um, it's not going to be something that we ever care about. We'll talk about the back of Bergy, God of Storytelling, in just a little bit. Um, and then we use these mana advantage engines, and then Rite of Flame, Mana Morphos, Seething Song, Desperate Ritual to pump out a bunch of red mana. Uh, the, we are a monocolored deck, which is just fine. Uh, we've got everything that we need in one color. And then we've got a a pile of mana advantage engines and a win con in burning wish that can get grape shot or empty the warrens we've got galvanic relay an old favorite the epic storm is pretty old hat at playing galvanic relay and bonus round ruby storm is also going to be doing the exact same thing uh hello everybody in chat yeah fantastic i'm glad you guys are here uh, we also are going to use Jessica's Will, which can also function as kind of a seething song, right? It has a modal spell, uh, unless I control a commander, which I'm not going to be doing in the legacy format. But it's I'm either going to be a ritual, adding red for each card in my opponent's hand, or I'm going to exile the top three cards, and then I can play them this turn. So red's card advantage, very similar to Galvanic Relay, is exiling cards from the top, and being able to play them for a limited time rather than drawing them. So Galvanic Relay, I can do it next turn. Jessica's Will, I have to do it this turn, uh, but I get three for one, one, and then Galvanic Relay, obviously, a Storm. And then another one, uh, uh, Fast and Flames, by the way, is just a really, really powerful um, spell when all of our mana is in rituals with the exception obviously of this lotus petal over here um, whereas in the epic storm we have a lot of ritual based mana and we have a lot of artifact based mana so instead of splitting that we've got mostly art uh, mostly artifact mostly mostly ritual based mana here and fast and flames works out really nicely but we're going to be trying something new not new. This is from Commander Legends Baldur's Gate. Five mana for Inspired Tinkering. It's a sorcery. Exile the top three cards. Until the end of my next turn, I can play those cards. And then I get three treasure tokens. So this is kind of like a Jessica's Will. I'm getting three cards, but I don't have to play them right away. I can wait until my next turn so I can have some kind of a pseudo Galvanic Relay, pseudo Jessica's Will, and then I get some th treasures as well all of this all of the sorceries all of the mana all of the past and flames burning wish well past and flames is not really that important we can double up with bonus round bonus round is an amazing sorcery it's from uh what set is this this is battle bond i think battle bond yes so bonus round until end of turn whenever a player casts an instant or a sorcery spell that player copies it and may choose new targets for the copy. This is an incredibly powerful effect, especially when paired up with things like Seething Song. 10, 10 red mana? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Uh, inspired Tinkering. Exile six cards, I can play them until my next turn, and make three treasures. So it's actually plus one mana. So it's really, really awesome. Jessica's Will, I can't switch modes. So if I choose mana for the first one and I and I, I have cast a bonus round and it copies it, then I still only get mana. I can't choose between the two, but that's totally fine. Um, 
A little bit of a non-bow is bonus round and things with storm. It copies the original, but not the storm trigger. So if I galvanic relay for six and a bonus round, then that's seven total galvanic relay copies. Uh, Burning Wish, I can get a sideboard Rite of Flame for extra mana, and I can get the Grape Shot, or I can do the Past in Flames and a Grape Shot. I have a lot of options. These six very powerful sorceries in the sideboard for uh, for this Burning Wish. And then on the back side of Burgi is another card advantage engine, Harnfell Horn of Bounty. It's an artifact for five mana. Discard a card, exile the top two cards of my library, and I can pay. I can play them this turn. So, like we're talking about with red and their card advantage engines, it's exiling from the top of my library, and I have a limited amount of time to play them. But that's just fine. I plan on killing my opponent very quickly. And to back all of this up, we are an ancient tomb deck. Play this ruby medallion, and we have four, read them, four sandstone needles. This is a Mercadian Masks um, fast land, I guess. Not a fast land, it's a, it's a soul land. There we go. Uh, sandstone needle ETBs tapped with two depletion counters on it, and I can tap, remove a, a counter, and add red, red. Um, and then once the counters are gone, I sacrifice it. So I get two bursts of double mana for one land is really really nice so i've got a lot of mana a lot of card advantage and we're going to keep churning 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 and then we're going to be able to burning wish grape shot our opponent out who needs tendrils of agony when you can just grape shot we're going to be building a bunch of storm we're going to be bunch building a bunch of mana um so no city of traders yeah we can certainly be playing city of traders uh this deck is actually uh, not necessarily budget, but this is actually reserve list free. There's no reserve list cards in this 75. Ancient Tombs have been reprinted quite a bit, and Ruby Medallion's been reprinted recently, I believe. Um, and then online, this is actually 175, 200 tickets. Um, very cheap, and if you have a a loan account like Card Hoarder, which is a great loan service, the one that I use, then you can actually get this on, on the cheap really, really nice. Uh, hey, Caleb, how's it going? So it, out of the sideboard, we've already kind of talked about some of our Burning Wish targets. We have Rite of Flame, the fourth Rite of Flame. Grape Shot is one of our win conditions. Galvanic Relay, obviously another powerful engine in the sideboard. Empty the Warrens, another win condition. Past in Flames, an engine, and then Reforge the Soul actually is a really, really good way to refill after we've made a bunch of mana. We actually have some really powerful card advantage um, this turn if we need it. And then as far as cards that we're going to be boarding in, we have four Leyline of the Voids. Leagues are full of things like Cephalid Breakfast and Reanimator right now. And Leyline of the Void is a very powerful way to just stop that cold. Three defense grids, also really powerful. Permanent, we can power out on turn one to prevent our opponent from interacting with us on our turn or to significantly hamper their interaction. And then um, lastly, Blast Zone. Now, Blast Zone is a... A land that can function as a removal spell for um, specific mana values, right? And we don't really necessarily care about Chalice on one or even zero for that matter. Uh, as far as one drops, we have three Rite of Flames in the main deck and zeros, we have four Lotus Petals. What we really care about are things like Deafening Silence Blast Zone is a very good answer for that. We don't have to tick it up. We can just deploy it and activate it as soon as we have the requisite three mana. Um, Thalia can be problematic, but if we get a couple of Ruby Medallions out, it's not really that much of a, a, a big deal. But um, Blast Zone for Deafening Silence is really, really important here. Uh, we are otherwise stone cold. So Blast Zone is kind of a catch-all for our... Uh, hate card, hate permanent removal, if you will. 
Oh, Jason, that's all right. Don't worry about it. You can catch it on the VOD later, but I'm glad you're hanging out here at the very least. Uh, so this is the deck. I'm pretty excited about this. We don't have anything hiding over here. Nope. Okay. And um, obviously we're playing uh, My Favorite Mountains. We, we were talking last stream, I think, about some of the APAC and Euro Mountains. These are some Euro Mountains. Um, they're they're my, my favorite mountain of choice. So I have already got a, a uh, league queued up. And we're going to get started. If you want, you can check out the deck list uh, in the description below. It'll take you to um, Moxfield. And if you want to rent the deck, I'm going to pin a comment on the YouTube video later. If you're watching it not live, then you can actually link it. The links will take you to Card Hoarder, and you can actually rent the deck straight from that link. It'll autofill your cart, or the TCG link will autofill your TCG cart with the cards that you need with this. And it's actually really decent because, like we were just talking about, this is a relatively inexpensive legacy deck. Budget, maybe not, but relatively inexpensive. Uh, and you get some, some really awesome cards out of the deal. So let me tell you a little bit about um, how you can support us with clicking those links and things like that while I queue into this. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsroom.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Well, it's not quite time to combo, but that's quite all right. We'll get there eventually. We are going to be queuing into our opponent shortly. But how is everybody doing? It's a nice Thursday uh, morning, afternoon, or night. I'm not sure where you are in the world, but I'm assuming it's kind of towards the evening for everybody today. Did you have good days? I know that uh, Bryant was watching a nice... Uh, uh, Mets game. I don't know how they do. Who knows? Uh, who's the Jin on the Burning Wish card? I actually, it's probably uh, Jusmati Jin, right? I, I would assume that it's Jusmati Jin. Oh, Joe L. Okay, so I recently played this player. They are a blue black reanimator player. I think that they've even featured on Bosch and Roll. Um, and this is going to be. Hmm. We are on the draw, and we've got Ruby Medallion, and we've got some places to go with the Galvanic Relay. This seems a little slow. Uh, this Galvanic Relay is not going to do terribly great things, but we can do this all on turn one. So our turn two is potentially really good. I'm going to keep this uh, and understand that we're going to try our best. Um, Nathan, sad face. Who knows? Um, okay, we're gonna keep this. Hmm. Our opponent likely is playing. Oh, blue black reanimator, but maybe not. Maybe, maybe they're doing something else. So, all Ancient Tomb, play a Lotus Petal, play around a potential Daze, uh, if this is indeed not what I think it is. Hmm. Resize my chat. Oh, is it off on the corner? Yeah, there we go. Oops, thanks. Um, alrighty. Oh clicking through things and I don't really need to be doing that because I need to be casting this Desperate Ritual and assuming that this resolves then I can Calvanic Relay. This is a potential spot for where they could daze us but okay Galvanic Relay for four and our Relay gives us a Mountain, bonus round, Manamorphose and another Galvanic Relay. Okay so this could be really, really good, depending on what we draw for our turn and how our opponent interacts with us. 
Uh, is this an underground sea? It is. Is this an entomb? It is. Okay. What are they going to entomb? A Grizzlebrand. That makes the most sense to me. Powerful card. I, um, I think that it makes sense that you want to entomb Grizzlebrand first, and it just goes to show which is the more powerful creature, Grizzlebrand or the new Atraxa. Well, our opponent, a skilled opponent, a magician with this blue-black reanimator, is choosing to get Grizzlebrand, not Atraxa. <laughs> so they actually had animate dead, not reanimate, which is unfortunate for us because they're not losing life. They can activate Grizzlebrand twice. Um, it's really just too bad. But they've only activated it once and they're going to clean up. They have another activation available and they are a force of will deck. So we'll need to be playing that. Um, playing around around that, excuse me. Hmm. Unfortunately, with our exile, I don't think that... Ooh. Omniscience, Emrakul, the Aeon's Torn, and Besaju. I guess they're a show-and-tell deck as well. Okay. Manamorphose. That's pretty good. If our first one resolves. So if our first one resolves, we'll be off to the races, so to speak. If this one doesn't resolve, then we're kind of SOL. As it is, it worked out just fine. Um, we have to Manamorphose again. Um, I don't have a Bergy out or anything like that. I only have two red mana, so Manamorphose it is. I can't bonus round anything. Are we gonna draw something other than a land? We are. Okay, can I bonus round? Let's bonus round here. Okay, we get a force of will. That's fine. Exiling a ponder. And then we'll tap this ancient tomb to help cast a seething song. And then a galvanic relay. Not the greatest. This is a relay for six. Um, I could have held the seething song. I thought about it. Uh, but I think that keeping our hand undiscardable and putting that seething song into uh, a card from a relay exile and protecting it, so to speak, um, made the most sense to me. So even though that mana was tech, quote unquote, wasted, the storm was not. That was my thinking about that anyway. So our, our relay was not very good. We have an inspired tinkering, a bonus round, and a burning wish, and then a uh, ruby medallion, that's not the worst thing, but then a couple of lands. So we might be able to, if we draw some mana, we might be able to, inspired tinkering, get some, oh, shieldred, okay. Well, we're not gonna play, we're not planning on drawing any cards, but that does mean that we're not going to, um... Oh yeah, that's right. This is just a combo. They can just draw their entire deck. I will allow my opponent to have their fun. I'll show you about this. Um, so we're all good to go. Oh, Nathan. Uh, so Sandstone Needle enters the battlefield tapped. I can't, I can't use it the turn that I play it. And I needed to be able to actually metamorphose into everything. So they're going to go infinite, as it were, and they are they have infinite life, and they're going to be draw, drawing their entire deck, 
And then what they can do is they can discard an Emrakul that we've already seen to hand size and pass with as many cards as they, their heart desires, their entire hand in, or their entire deck in their hand. And uh, I can't do anything about this. So I am going to concede. Um, I want to... Uh, I want to learn a little bit more about my opponent's deck, uh, if they'll allow me to. Uh, they are drawing the last three cards of the deck. They're at 57 life, which actually, to be completely honest, is not the hardest thing for Ruby Storm to get past, but um, 55 car uh, 46 cards in, in hand, yeah, that's gonna be the problem. Don't think that we can do that. Um, so they play two Lotus Petals. I wonder if they play any more. Like, I want to know how aggressively fast this deck is. Uh, we obviously see Ancient Tomb, which is probably for the show-and-tell technology that we were assuming is in the in the pile, because we saw um, Omniscience and Emrakul and um, Beseju, the old Beseju, um, who shelters all. And then we're going to see a bunch of the deck when they discard. So getting a little of extra information and then I'll concede. And as a matter of fact, they're gonna be able to um, draw their entire hand in my upkeep, uh, or their entire deck in my upkeep and it's not gonna matter at all. Yeah, Adam, Matraxa doesn't draw 50, you are correct. It's a little bit more powerful than that. Oh, Stark, hey. Yeah, we're in uh, we're in round one, game one against Blue Black Reanimator Show and Tell, and it's uh, not going super well in game one. But in game two, we have some ley lines. Uh, we know that the graveyard is going to be a powerful thing in these leagues that we're going to need to stop. So we've got a play set of ley lines, and we actually might try to find room for the deafening silences as well. They're a force of will deck. So this is going to be a little taxing on the sideboard. We're going to see how how we can we can work that. Thirty seven cards to discard. I I do want I I do want the information. Um, I want to know if they're playing grief, if they're playing thoughtseize, if they're playing duress. Uh, certain cards that I haven't seen yet. I I am going to make them discard just a little bit, and then I'll concede immediately afterwards. So Emrakul, Temporary Zone is here. Uh, okay, so we have, oh, they're Limduel's fault. Intuition, okay, so Thoughtseize, Thoughtseize. I don't see any, oh, Shallow Grave, that kind of makes sense, okay. Okay, no grief, I didn't see any grief, which is just letting me know that they're not super discard heavy. They play the Thoughtseizes and that's about it. Um, so Leyline for sure, right? Uh, we, we've seen the, the show and tell. Um, so they obviously have a plan around Graveyard Hate. Blast Zone, no. Defense Grid, maybe. Um, so these are the cards that I'm looking at. And as far as outs go, I think that The Galvanic Relays are likely not going to be very good. I think that we can get rid of the Relays. Those are going to be things that we're going to want in a longer game. This game is not going to go long. Um, and then a couple of things that I'm thinking about are more expensive Inspired Tinkerings. Um... Hmm. Maybe the Desperate Rituals. We have a lot of mana, but maybe we can shave a couple of bits. So if we do this and 
this we can fit everything in. I don't know um, how I feel about cutting mana specifically, right? The, the inspired tinkering is gonna be useful because it makes treasures, but I think that shaving on a little bit of that and making sure that we are protected um, can go a long way. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna shave the galvanic relays. This is a combo matchup. Galvanic relays card advantage is not gonna be what we need. And then shave the rituals and a couple of this, the tinkerings. All right, let's submit that. Who would you like to play first? I would like to play first. Well, I have the ley line and not much else. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to mulligan this one. Um, this, this is a keep. I, I can play a sandstone needle and a lotus petal on turn one. Turn two, I can see about See about seething song into a defense grid and seeing what happens. Uh, we'll keep this. I might put the Jessica's will back. No, the Jessica's will is our. Yeah, I think I'll put the. Hmm. So seething song is going to allow us to backside the Bergy to make the horn, which is going to be our card advantage. Um, Jessica's will potentially could do the same thing, but it's really not what we need right now. Um, so I think the Jessica's will is going to go back. I want the bonus round. Maybe I'm thinking too hard on the fact that this is called bonus round Ruby Storm and I want it too much. Maybe it's not the greatest. Um, We're gonna be thinking this through together. This is my first time playing. I'm gonna put the bonus round back. This is my first time actually piloting the deck and you're gonna be learning together with me. If you have suggestions, then let me know. I think that it's gonna be a fun league. Uh, piloting the deck looks like a, an absolute blast and I can't wait to have a bunch of copies and stacks and, and things like that. Hmm. We'll see what our opponent does. Now, obviously, we're not having a ley line start, um, which, who knows, my opponent might have anticipated, and they've got some removal spells in their hand that are, are rotting now that they uh, don't have that available. I don't know. Thoughtseize, yep, there's the Thoughtseize. Human Doom, what am I getting for dinner? Um, I stopped by a local taco shop and got some dinner. They have a taco called the Fifth Amendment and they won't tell you what's in it. Um, it's something new every day and they, they announce it after, after the day is over. Um, okay. So Ancient Tomb is nice. It will allow me to... Hmm. So I could Seething Song Bergy Jessica's Will, or I can just Bergy right now and maybe I could, hold up. Should I Horn of Harnfell? Um, I would need to open myself up to days, which I didn't see, uh, as a matter of fact. So I don't think that they'll have days. Then I would have no mana available. So I can see Thing Song into the horn and have two mana available, which won't let me Jessica's will, but I could potentially, uh, I mean, I'm gonna discard the Jessica's will to get two fresh cards. Doesn't seem, doesn't seem like the best. So I'm going to Bergy. and call it good. Yeah, the Stream Beats is fantastic. This is their, um, what, what do I have this called? The Synth, their Synth playlist. It's very good. So, Bergy on the stack. Tell us your stories, hopefully. Don't get countered. Hmm. 
and is getting force world. Okay. Well, next turn we can potentially Seething Song into a Jessica's Will to exile the top three, see where that leads us. There are four cards, five cards in our opponent's hand. Um, Gavin, yeah, absolutely. And uh, if you guys are enjoying the stream, make sure to uh, spam some emotes. You can become a YouTube member and spam some awesome emotes for that. Okay, now I'm pretty ready to Seething Song and take this places. Jessica's Will was a good draw. Uh, black Mana. What are we doing with one Black Mana? In Tomb? Um, I'm not quite sure why we're entombing now. Entombing a Grizzlebrand? Are you going to Dark Ritual and... Oh, Flusterstorm. Okay. Okay. Sure. Well, I can't do anything about that. Okay, so we will get to go through the next couple of turns and hopefully draw into something. But our opponent has pretty handily, Thoughtseize, Force of Will, Flusterstorm, pretty handily beat our, our hand. This defense grid would have been really nice um, if not for the Thoughtseize. Oh, if our opponent didn't have good cards, my deck would be performing so well. That's how I sounded just then. Hmm. I don't know what it is, but I'm pretty sure that anybody that's playing combo understands the importance of um, optimizing every little detail of edge in a game that they get. So I'm pretty sure that all combo players play swamps. It's just, uh, it's just something that happens. I'm going to play this defense grid instead of the Jessica's Wills. Give us a little bit of a chance to draw something. Um, our opponent chose not to shuffle with their ponder, by the way. A little worrisome. Michael, hey! Welcome back to the stream. Fantastic. You're catching us in round one against Blue Black Reanimator, Show and Tell, Tin Fins. Um, it's not quite Tin Fins. They don't have like a Children of Corliss, Tendrils of Agony win, but it doesn't matter. They're going to kill us very quickly. Shallow Grave. Okay. Well, we're going to take seven. Fall to seven. Our opponent is going to draw a lot of cards. Hopefully not draw enough cards to combo us um they have I'm pretty sure they have a play set of of lotus petals they could play out and a land to play around this defense grid but hopefully that doesn't happen and the shallow grave is going to um yeah michael i guess he's pretty well known for it some other people in chat have recognized him from uh, Bosch and rolls stream he he did some donations there and i played against him yesterday playing what I assume is the same deck. Okay. Our opponent is going to show and tell. I suppose I could have six through this. Um, it's not really anything I can do, but this omniscience is going to get a concession. Yeah, we're gonna concede. We're not gonna beat this. Alrighty. So that is 0-1 against Blue Black Reanimator, a combo matchup killer, uh, especially Storm. I think that they've got a pretty good Storm matchup, to be completely honest. But if you uh, want to hear about some of the rise of Blue Black Reanimator and some of the cool things that are happening in the legacy meta as people adjust to a lack of 
EI Expressive Iteration and White Plume Adventurer in the format, you can check out three people, one of whom played the Blue Black Reanimator deck that we actually just lost to, and one of them who played the bonus round Ruby Storm deck that we're playing right now. Three people getting together on Eternal Glory. And let me tell you a little bit about them while we queue up into a, uh, oh, where is it? There we go. Queue up into a league match. The best legacy podcast? That would be Eternal Glory featuring myself, Bryant Cook, alongside Brian Koval and Phil Gallagher. We're available on all major podcast platforms and YouTube. Alrighty. So we are back and we just queued up. Probably heard it. I didn't actually mute the the, the game. I don't know. Uh, the Jerk. I do not have a Twitch or YouTube channel myself. No, I am actually just streaming here. Uh, we don't really stream on Twitch. The direct to YouTube, being able to post a live YouTube video works out really well. And um, I'm doing it for the Epic Storm. I didn't like the first hand. That was pretty garbage. But the second hand, I'm going to keep. And I think that I'm going to lead on Hmm. I can probably get rid of Mountain. And I can plan to Ancient Tomb, Ruby Medallion on turn one, Ruby Medallion on turn two with a Standstone Needle, and then turn three, I have awesome uh, reduction in cost for all of my spells, Burning Wish, Galvanic Relay. Hopefully we're going to do a bunch of really fun things. So the Mountain is gone and sandstone needle ancient tomb are how we are going to survive this uh this game we're gonna win we're gonna beat them handily hopefully prismatic vista all right so potentially a fair deck uh, noble hierarch so this could be the bant stone blade with uh, wayfarer's boots or whatever boots grant initiative um, this also could be a daze deck. Uh, we're going to find out. Nope, that just resolved. Um, I want to actually lead on Ruby Medallion um, and go Medallion, Medallion, and then turn three, I want to lean in on the, on the combo potential of our hand. Ignoble Hierarch. That is not something that I was expecting. Um, this could be a natural order deck with a bunch of mana dorks. Um, I'm not sure. I guess we'll find out. Ignoble Hierarch is a, is an interesting choice. Did our opponent mold a five? They did. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice catch. Thanks. Thanks for the advice. Okay. So I certainly can make a little small relay, but... And our opponent is technically representing a natural order next turn. Um, either way, I'm playing out the needle. And what I can do is Ruby Medallion Ritual Burning Wish Relay. Um, yeah, sure. Why not do everything now? I'm not... It's not getting any better, right? Especially with this... Uh... Okay, so... Galvanic Relay costs one, which is fantastic. So we can Burning Wish and we can double Relay. Um, or, let's see. I can Rite of Flame and Relay? No, that's just silly. We're gonna, we're gonna Relay twice. 
Rite of Flame seething song, a needle, a lotus petal, another Rite of Flame. And then there we go. Uh, we could grape shot uh, and get rid of the dorks, I, but I think that on a mole, and they're probably going to be getting something like an Atraxa or, or I don't know. I don't want to speculate necessarily if it's a natural order deck. Are we luring? We food chain? Painful truths. What? Um. Sure. I have no idea what's going on, guys. Uh, chat. What? What am I playing against? <laughs> I have. I have no clue. Okay, they are Abrupt Decaying, a Ruby Medallion. Uh, Abrupt Decay in the main deck, Painful Truths, Basic Forest, Basic Island, Basic Swamp, Noble Hierarch, Ignoble Hierarch. I have no idea. Y'all, this is, this is too much for my small tiny brain to handle. Um, if it was Domain Zoo, I would have assumed that these are going to be triomes or something like that. Okay, so let's um, let's go. Let's just let's we straight zoom in here. I think that we can even medallion here. Okay, they have a force of will, exiling a baleful strix. Sure. You have one card in hand. I'm going to write a flame. And now I can bonus round. Our first bonus round of the evening, everybody. And then a write a flame. We get bonus round copies. Now we're doing the thing. Oh man. Our opponent didn't let us do the thing. That's fine. That's too bad. Um, yeah, it could be Nick Fit stuff, y'all. Uh, Draco type stuff? I don't think so. Not with the basic lands. Like I said, probably need to try ohms or some dual lands for that stuff. But, oh well. And uh, an opponent that scoops is not the worst thing in the world. So, I have to assume that we're we're playing some kind of natural order, food chain, or a Lurin deck. Maybe not a Lurin. Maybe not a Lurin. It didn't look really, but food chain potentially, or natural order, or some kind of Nick fit. Um, figure that out. Either way, defense grid is gonna come in. Uh, Galvanic Relay looked fantastic. I, I, I like that. Against a combo control deck, I like it a little less, but it's probably just fine. Um, hmm. The relays, the relays were indeed fantastic. So, let's see if they're going to bring in some graveyard hate. Is this past in flames necessary? I don't know. We have access to it through Burning Wish, whether we take it out or not, right? Um, this is really good against counter spells anyway, so maybe that's not necessary. Things that are bad against counter spells are more of the mana intensive things in the deck, like Inspired Tinkering. I really want to try this card out. Um, bonus Round is also particularly bad against counter spells um, because even though my spells are copied our opponent's spells are also copied so I'm going to side like that and side in defense grids and we're going to submit as so I have no no, no knowledge about whether this is a an arena rector um, type deck a Nick fit type deck where I would need ley lines but we're gonna we're gonna go with this. All right, a lot of burning wishes, not a lot of mana. I think that I'm going to mulligan this one. Obviously, we have a desperate ritual, but not a lot of mana. This looks much better. So Jessica's wills, 
fantastic. Manamorphosis, really good. Relays, obviously we've just talked about how good that was. Um, it's a little all in, right? Hmm. Maybe I keep this and bottom a Jessica's will. Yeah, let's try that out. Ooh, got a foil bonus round. Yeah, the card's really good. It's really good in multiples, like bonus round and then cast a bonus round and the first one copies the bonus round. So you get two bonus rounds. So you copy something three times. Yeah, it's all great fun. Tropical Island Noble Hierarch. I have no idea. I have I have no idea. Ancient Tomb. That's a pretty solid one. Um, do I want to cast a Ruby Medallion right now? Um, or do I want to do it all in one turn? I'm going to do it all in one turn so that my Ruby Medallion counts to my Galvanic Relay um, Storm. So we're going to play the Needle out and then the Tomb do it all next turn. Brainstorm. Can't cast that off of Ignoble Hierarch. Such a strange pile of cards. I'm very intrigued. Tropical Island. Not gonna fetch that Brainstorm. Collector Oof. Sure. I have four Lotus Petals. Those are my only artifacts with activated abilities. I am okay with that. Never thought I would say those words in that order before, but Collector Oof is not a problem. And treasures. Yeah, you are correct, Aaron, but I did board out two of my... Um, okay, so they had a Force of Will, and they pitched a Baleful Strix. Okay. So that stymied our turn, but we've got plenty of stuff to do. Another Baleful Strix. Okay. Pretty sure I, I boarded out two of our treasure. Yep. Two of our inspired tinkerings are in the sideboard. The Lotus Petal. Well, hey, let's shut off. Whatever, whatever am I going to do? They have three cards in hand, so this Jessica's Will actually is not going to be mana positive. What I'm going to do instead is exile the top three. See what happens. I can play them this turn. Ooh, we're getting another force. All right. Um, I have to keep passing. Interesting. Feels like a natural order, Bruchon. Green base, counter magic, discard, convert the mana to orcs. Yeah, probably. Uro, okay. Got a little bit of everything. We saw nothing but basic lands uh, in game one. Now we're seeing nothing but dual lands game two. Um, but yeah, I would, I would say that you're right. You're right, probably. Okay, so we have four mana. And then it's all gone. Or at least the needle is gone. So what I can do is convert some of this into red. Some of the colorless, I should say. So mana morphos again. make red burning wish well I can cast a burning wish uh, I only have five mana so burning wish and galvanic relay are going to work um, I can get the sideboard right of flame actually not the worst idea That's an extra storm that I can use. Yeah, let's do that. And then Lotus Petal, and I can't use the Lotus Petal, but that is a relay for six. Not bad. 
and our relay for six is a burning wish and desperate ritual bergy inspired tinkering ruby medallion and a lotus petal all right potentially really good this inspiring tinkering as aaron i think it was aaron uh, aaron pointed out is not going to do anything as far as ooh, ooh, him to torok cleaning us up okay i'm glad we relayed then We're at five. We gotta do something. These ancient tomb hits have been a little painful. Um, so I can Ruby Medallion, Desperate Ritual. Mm, this is not really... Uh, giving much hmm so I have three mana available two of which is ruby medallion and then one the ritual is going to be three mana and I can front half a burgy to block and the baleful strix attacks me to one I don't like that um I can't inspire tinkering. I can't back half Bergy. Uh, I can burning wish, but I would have two mana in the pool. And the only thing that I could really do is grape shot the, the creatures and then kind of flounder for a while. Um, so I think that it's gonna be Bergy and hope to draw into something like a uh, Jessica's will, I guess. Um, Lotus Petal is mana with Bergy. That's a, that's a good point. I don't think that that, I guess I could cast the Burning Wish in, them, in that case. Okay. So we're gonna go to three. And then Desperate Ritual, Bergy. Lotus Petal, two mana, Burning Wish, two mana. Uh, I guess I can relay. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm not used to doing the the Ruby Medallion uh, Bergy math, but that actually is pretty decent. So I can do that, or I can. No, it's just going to be Galvanic Relay. And then I'll make sure to play my sandstone needle out. And pass the turn. So Bergy is gonna be able to block the collector oof or they just attack with the Baleful Strix for two in the air and I go to one. Um, I doubt that, oh wow, Jace the Mind Sculptor. This does not look like a Lurin. Uh, the cash register. Yep, that's gonna be lethal. Wild. It's been a long time since I've seen a Jace unsummon. Um, okay. That's a thing, I guess. Um, yeah, bug control. I'm not sure why they have ignoble hierarch, but black is potentially a really important color for them. Uh, we've seen Uro. I'm not bringing in Leyline for Uro. That's ridiculous. Why would you even mention that, guys? Um, I think that I'm happy with the sideboarding. Inspired tinkering, obviously a little worse with collector oof, so I actually like the, uh, the boarding that out. Galvanic relay would have been really nice. Submit as is. I would like to play first. Mm. Yep. This is going to be just fine. Turn one, defense grid. 
turn two sandstone needle, turn three, do a bunch of really cool stuff with our opponent at two mana. So they can't play into the defense grid unless they drew or they started with a mana dork. They also kind of have an abrupt decay. I'm going to keep this um, and just turn one defense grid. See what happens. Might not even resolve. Yeah, I'm going to try, Nathan. Don't worry about that. Okay. Force of Will. Pitch in a Brainstorm. And a Ponder for our opponent off of a basic island. And they chose to shuffle. You love to see that, at the very least. Hmm. Okay. So I could Bergy right now, but... I could horn next turn, and that might actually be better. So I'm going to wait. This island does not cast uh, him to Torok, so that swamp might cast the Thoughtseize. Nope. Alright. Okay. How best to do this? Let's start off with Bergy. Um, I don't think that I need the Harnfell now that I have like a bunch of other action. I think that being able to turn this into a mana, mana engine is really good. Um, and I'll just pass the turn after this. We don't need to, we don't need to jam in right now we can we can wait a little bit that's totally fine they're chock full of spells i've got a lot of mana um let's see about a bonus round is that gonna be something i want right now sure let's bonus round Oh, I should have yielded to that. I'll yield to the next one. And that resolved. Love to see it. Love to see it. Um, yes, they, they can copy counters. This is not going to help play around counters. But... Oh, what? Uh, okay. I, I guess we are going to win and never actually be able to do a single thing in our combo turns. Uh, we resolved a bonus round and put a seething song onto the stack and our opponent has conceded. So not gonna, not gonna happen. Handful of hierarchs. Yep, no green mana, handful of hierarchs. That's how it goes. But okay, we got one on the board, I guess. And I never cast more than one spell on a combo turn. Yeah, that's not true. I cast a few, but all right, pretty cool. If you want to support more content like this, this stream, in, as a matter of fact, you can become a YouTube member. I actually told you a little bit about that before round one, but um, I'm going to tell you that you can still become a YouTube member and support the stream. However, if you like all of the written content on the Epic Storm, which is mostly about the Epic Storm, although Caleb is doing a bunch of really cool content about modern and their other non the Epic Storm decks as well, uh, you can you can look into our website and support site writers like me and Caleb Scherer and Alex McKinley and Alex Poling and Al Oliver Everhard and and Brian Cook. I suppose he writes some articles every once in a while. But let me tell you a little bit about that while we're queuing into round three. Want early access to articles at theepicstorm.com? Become a member of our patron to get articles seven days early on top of other sweet benefits and help us pay our website team. You can sign up at patreon.com slash theepicstorm. All right. Yeah, paid actor for sure. And you can help paid actors like my opponent in the last round by becoming a Patreon. Uh, patron. It is a Patreon, and they have patrons, and you can become a patron. 
Some of the terminology gets mixed up in my mouth, but that's okay. A uh, handful of hierarchs just, just sitting around twiddling their thumbs. They actually probably had all kinds of mind break traps and everything like that, but I slipped in a cool 50 ticks on, uh, on Moto and nothing happened. That's how that works, right? I subscribe to MTGO Premium and my opponents are easy. You can, you can totally look at all of the previous streams and see how easy they all went. That, that's just fine. Hopefully, um, by your opponent. Yeah, absolutely, Alex. So hopefully my opponents are like that, uh, like, uh, what is this, Kiss Waylander? Uh, this weekend, I'm actually playing in a team event. I will be playing in the Legacy seat, and there's Vintage and Modern. I'm really excited about it. It's a, it's a team trial event for a team trio um, major event that's going to be later on in, um, I think it's May. It's called the Land Run. It's like a local, a local large event. Um, I guess it's regional. We got a bunch of regional people on, and it's, I'm pretty excited about it. And the event this Saturday um, is going to be for a buy to the main event. And if my team and I get a buy, then our team can get a buy in the first round, which is going to be really nice. Um, looking forward to it. I'll be playing something. I don't know. Maybe you guys are going to be my opponents for the, the team trio trial. And I don't want to spill my beans, but I'll be in the Legacy. I'm really excited to see some vintage being played. I haven't played paper vintage in a long, long time. I've been playing some online, but it's not quite the same. And then modern. I haven't played modern in a while either. And it's a format that I've heard is doing, doing pretty good. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Some paper magic on the weekend. It's been a while since I've been able to sling some actual cardboard and actually since our opponent is taking a while i can tell you about some of the things that i could use if i do end up playing the epic storm to keep track of all of my storm and mana and my ooze tokens and my goblins actually i have my own goblins but like we have an awesome token pack that you can get on the website that i will obviously tell you about after this round so our hand looks pretty solid actually I'm pretty happy about it. Um, and we're going to keep. Our opponent is on the play, however. It's a little unfortunate. Hmm. Let's see what J Necht is playing. It looks like maybe Delver, maybe Show and Tell. I don't know. Maybe combo deck. Okay. Play Mountain. Make them respect a Pyroblast. And the next turn, we can either lean really hard into this Galvanic Relay. Oh, I'm thinking about Pyroblasting this Ponder. I'm really thinking about it. Nah, it's fine. You can have a Ponder. And our opponent might shuffle, may not. I don't know. Uh, Nathan, it was good to see you in chat. Absolutely. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Get some work done. Be productive. And enjoy this really awesome Avon land that our opponent is playing. Something tells me this is show and tell. Very few land, very few is it decks are playing mountains, basic mountains. Okay. I am going to really lean into um, this this relay. If our opponent lets it. Okay, they did. Metamorphose. Maybe. I don't know. We're thinking about it.
Don't daze me, bro. Okay, force of negation. That's fine. So now I don't want them to daze me. Because now I won't be able to be able I won't be able to relay afterwards. But this is just fine. Oh man. I wish I could play that. That's fine. It would have been nice if they didn't counter the Manamorphos. Then I would have been able to play the Ruby. They would have eaten the counter anyway, but you know, that's fine. Okay, our relay pile is a couple of Manam. Oh wait, no, one of those Manamorphos is the Force of Negation. So Lotus Petal, Manamorphos, Bergy, Bonus Round, Seething Song, Sandstone Needle. Sandstone Needle is going to be less important. Um, if I do try to combo off next turn. Yeah, Gavin, same amount of storm. It all it all comes out in the wash. Um, our opponent is pondering and pondering and pondering, and they even pitched a brainstorm. So they've got cantrips for days. Uh, luckily, they don't have days. The subtitle, the auto subtitler, whenever I say days, says the wrong thing. And... Oh, another beautiful, uh, what is this? Is this Mirage? Yeah, it is Mirage. Um, Mirage Basics, really, really cool stuff. Seething Song, that's a good pickup. Let's see how this is all going to work. Oh, I shouldn't have played that. I can get Bergy mana. Mm -hmm. As soon as I did that, oh! Minor misstep. Okay, I guess uh, so I really did want that Bergy mana, didn't I? Hmm. Okay, so do I play the Ruby Medallion and then the Ancient Tomb and Bergy? I think that's going to have to be it. I'll do it the other way around. I'll play the Bergy first and then... We'll see how things go. Our opponent has three cards in hand. Um, and they're, oh wow, Teferi Time Raveler. Is this Jeskai Control? This is Jeskai Control, okay. Yep, that's gonna stuff it uh, for us. I'm going to be able to play this Ruby Medallion out at least. Um, but I can't play these awesome spells that I have in my my exile. So that's unfortunate. Past in Flames is going to allow us to reload, which is fantastic. Uh, just a little unfortunate that we weren't, be, weren't able to actually do everything. Yeah, Spirit Squad, right? Sandstone Needle. It's fantastic. It's like a better Ancient Tomb in the Mono Red deck. Uh, speak of the devil. There they are. Okay. So I can ritual out a big relay for next turn with this past in flames. And I think that that's what I'm going to do. And I can draw a card with the Manamorphos and we'll see where We'll see where things land. Hopefully that resolves. Okay, cool. That does. We can ride a flame and then desperate ritual. Uh, I will manamorphose now. I think that that's fine. I'll make red, red. Bergy. That's a pretty good card. I like Bergy. Um, do I want a Horn of Harnfell? No, because I'm going to be relaying, which is not actually going to give me cards in hand. Um, alternatively, I can Horn and get rid of the Sandstone Needle. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, Horn of Harnfell. Let's discard the sandstone needle, exile a 
couple of cards. Oh, those are good cards. Okay. So let's see Thing Song. This one is not going to actually have flashback for what it's worth. It has gone into the graveyard after the Past in Flames has resolved. Little things from Gift Storm that you learn about Past in Flames. Um, okay, so let's... Jessica's Will. Exile the top three. And I've got bonus round and another Bergy. So let's play the mountain. And the Bergy. And then the bonus round. This is really awesome. So we're going to get, we're gonna be able to flash back past in flames, by the way. Um, can we do that now? Uh, this is four, one, two, three, four, and we would have one mana left, and that's not enough to do things. So I do need to see Thing Song first. It's a little unfortunate. Uh, yep make a bunch of red mana and then flashback past in flames oops uh, more mana there we go okay double flashback yay I wonder if it says double flashback on here it does I have I have oh this galvanic really has triple flashback that's pretty cool uh, okay and then Jessica's will exile the top three and we get to exile the top six. We actually are doing the thing as it is, as it was. So now we've, we're really doing the thing. This is cool. We're inspired tinkering, which with bonus round is d plus one mana. And then with Bergy is plus two mana. This is just really cool. Okay. So I think we can just cast some spells. We have the Burning Wish, and all we need to do is get up to Grape Shot, which is gonna be easy peasy. More treasures, more cards, and we can play a Ruby Medallion, why not? Play a Lotus Petal, why not? And that'll give us the requisite for two Burning Wishes, which we can use to get Grape Shot and Empty the Warrens. And then we can Grape Shot our opponent and we win and our opponent let us click through that was super fun okay we got we got to do the thing uh we didn't get to put a lot of copies of everything on there we only found one bonus round throughout that whole thing i guess i could have actually flashed back to the bonus round i should have done that shouldn't i oh well that's fine um okay so against control we're bringing in defense grids and I might be convinced to bring in Blast Zone. We saw Teferi, so we know that there's white, and some Jeskai control lists are playing Defense Grid. I'm not gonna board it in right now, because, excuse me. Um, I'm not gonna board it in right now, because that's just going to be a little too preemptive. I'm gonna wait to see Defense Grid. Um, not Defense Grid, Deafening Silence, excuse me. Uh, before I actually am concerned about it. Uh, aren't running Overmaster? Yeah, so there's not really one particular... This isn't the epic gamble where I'm trying to protect an Echo of Eons or a Burning Wish in a specific way. I've got bonus round, maybe, Burning Wish, maybe, that I want to protect, but I'm going to be doing things after that that are not going to have the protection that I need. So this is not really an Overmaster deck. Um, at least it's not constructed that way in this scenario. Um, the Epic Gamble, certainly more of an Overmaster deck. 
Uh, I should finish sideboarding. I'm gonna take out two of the larger spells that don't work very well with counter magic. And this is kind of how we were boarding against the bug control deck. So Gavin, that's kind of why um, this list is not running Overmaster. I've seen some Ruby lists that are running Overmaster, uh, but that's mostly of the epic gamble um, piece of the puzzle. All right, we've got a Sandstone Needle. We've got a Defense Grid. We have mana and a bonus round and a Burning Wish. I'm going to keep this. Things that can really get us are Prismatic Ending, Agon the Defense Grid, not drawing a second land, and stuffing it to multiple counters. But those aren't, those things aren't gonna happen. I don't know what to tell you. That's just not gonna happen. Our opponent, oh, we are four color? Okay. Oh, obviously they're playing the card that solves legacy. Leyline Binding. It's where Fiend's Tower. So they can Prismatic Ending for four, I assume. Um, I'm guessing that that's the reason why Rafine's Tower is in the deck. Plus it's Esper, and Esper is my personal favorite. Uh, it's a shard, but shard wedge, my f favorite three color. Oh, and we drew a mountain. Excellent. So we can actually do a little bit of everything now if we want. So I can seething song into defense grid, into ride of flame seething song, ride of flame bonus round seething song. Is that right? One, two, three, five, three, three. Okay, so let's just play the defense grid and see what happens. I'm not going to, I'm not going to attempt to go off right now. I think that I am a mana short. At least, at least with the line that I was planning on taking. Uh, this is likely not going to resolve. Put it that way. Um, but it is one less counter that I have to deal with. Force of Will, pitching a Shark Typhoon. All right, we're really leaning into the slow and grindy control. So maybe I'll settle in for uh, a nice slow game myself. If I keep hitting these land drops, more Mirage. All right. I do respect the drip. Well, we're not settling into drawing lands, but I think that with four cards and our opponent not cantripping or anything like that, they're likely to have something else. And if this sandstone needle pops, uh, I still have a right of flame but it's not the greatest thing in the world. Um, four cards in hand. I'm drawing to two defense grids or lands to let me just play out more comfortably, I suppose. Hmm. What do you think, chat? Should we Seething Song into bonus round and start really going off with Jessica's will? Or should we wait be patient and pass the turn without making a land drop and um, try to develop in the in the following turns. If we if we don't draw land next turn, we will have to go to discard. If we don't combo off, uh, Jason's for all, going off. Um, something is telling me that I am gonna stuff it to like a fluster storm. Um, I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to wait for one more person. I'm going to wait for one more person and right wish an option to flush out a counter. Uh, there's a Galvanic Relay. Yeah. We are a game up. 
Yeah, let's jam. Let's jam. This is a storm deck. Let's make them fear us. Oh, look at that. Okay, bonus round. Hydroblast. That's a pretty good card against the mono red deck. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, now I'm just gonna Burning Wish for a Relay. Wow, they just, all of this is happening. Wow, uh, okay, sure. They had a Hydro Blast and they didn't counter the Seething Song. Um, cool. Okay. So we have Burning Wish bonus round, Bergy, Mountain, Ancient Tomb, Galvanic Relay, Galvanic Relay, Bergy. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Brainstorm from our opponent. Never punished, indeed. I'm going to take all of those that I can get. Um, modify this deck for Vintage? Probably not. Um, this is very linear. Uh, Storm is not at its best in Vintage. Uh, it's really going to be a Tinker, uh, Doomsday. Uh, so I'm not an expert in Vintage at all. If you want, um, a couple of months ago, there were the Vintage um, Eternal Weekend events, and you can go to I Am Actually Level 1's YouTube channel, Justin Ganari, and he did an excellent breakdown of the then current uh, eternal format known as vintage and he breaks down all the different decks and tells you what uh what's going on about them for all kinds of new players i would suggest going there and learning a little bit about what vintage has to offer i am not going to be a good resource for that uh okay we are really really lacking on mana holy crap Jessica's will is mana neutral. <clears throat> well, this sucks. So I can play a Bergy and say pass the turn and my relay did nothing? Um, yeah. That's straight poopy. I can't uh, burning wish for anything with a single color, colorless mana floating. Uh, I can't inspire tinkering. I can't. I could Jessica's will, but then I'm really lacking in anything other than the top three cards of my of my library. Um. I don't know, maybe maybe I lean into Jessica's will and hope that it, no, it has to specifically hit a Lotus Petal and a Rite of Flame in order to do anything. I, I have to just Bergy and pass the turn. I'm pretty unhappy with this, but that's what I got. It's fun. Oh, plus one, Justin. Oh, yeah. Vintage Murphle. Huh. That sounds fun. I think I remember him seeing, or remember seeing him play that a few months ago. Um, yeah. Justin's great. And we're getting our, our Berkey shoved into the trash. Okay. Well... We, we put these Galvanic Relays copies on the stack and they're not, they're not really working out well for us. Um, it's a little unfortunate. I'm gonna pass the turn. We are not under any clock and our hand is still pretty good. Um, 
We weren't able to turn the corner with that relay, unfortunately. So is this a shark for two? Oh, no, this is a knight or a samurai, samurai. Okay. Opponent has one card in hand and representing a hard cast force of will. And our opponent didn't activate. Okay, because they want to make another 2-2. Two -two. That checks out. Ah. So... I am at an even turn clock, so playing a defense grid is actually not going to change the clock at all. I am four turns, and then going to 14 doesn't change that. This might not do anything, but this um, will allow them will not allow them to hard cast a force if they'll they'll be forced to pitch for force that made sense it's a prismatic ending okay and that yeah now i'm three turns oh yeah because of the pluses that's right you're yeah um, still didn't change it. <laughs> Combat math, not my specialty because of, I don't know, storm. Uh, okay, Manamorphose into a Jessica's Will or So I'm gonna take six next turn, go to three. I can activate this ancient tomb, go to go to one, not be able to activate it again. I think I've got to do something now. Red, red. If you'll let me. Survey says. Uh, Manamorphose resolves. Sandstone Needle. That's potentially really good. Next turn. Um, Jessica's Will. Yeah, I wish I had that Sandstone Needle last turn. Hydroblast. Okay, there's the needle down, and I don't know what I can draw here. Um, seething Song is not enough for me to Burning Wish reforge the soul. Um, Ancient Tomb is turned off, so I only have four mana available. Um, seething Song would be plus two. Well, that's not going to do it. Okay. Game three. We're going to be on the play. I think that our sideboarding is just fine. Um, for what it's worth, I think that going for it was just fine. It was a miracle that Seething Song resolved. But um, the bonus round was kind of bait-ish, I suppose. The Seething Song was better bait, but our opponent let it. Oh, you'll have to let me know, by the way. I um, I changed the camera. I'm now facing this way, whereas before I was facing that way. Um, I guess that way. You'll have to let me know what ended up looking better. Which way, which way did you like? Uh, I'm frozen? Oh no. Hold up. Classic Oklahoma. It is actually kind of stormy outside not very stormy inside right now but yeah I kind of figured it was a much better camera angle I had a bunch of stuff in the way and I actually um, I built a desk and I got a new desk and now I have space for a camera where it should be and I'm pretty excited about it Okay, I'm gonna keep this hand. This is good. I'm gonna 
spin the Rite of Flame. Rite of Flame is fine, but we've got the Ruby Medallion and it's gonna be doing things, or... Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bin the Rite of Flame. Yeah, upload speed in the Midwest. Regardless of the things that I pay for internet here, um, not gonna happen. All right, flooded strand from our opponent. Another sandstone needle. I am content in passing. This is totally fine by me. I'm going to build up a ridiculous mana advantage, maybe get them to fight the Ruby Medallion and then be able to Jessica's will and go from there. We'll see. I like the idea of being able to Ruby Medallion and then continue comboing uh, the turn that it comes down. Is that this turn? I would have three mana after the Ruby Medallion to do a bunch of really cool things with that my opponent may or may not have interaction for. Uh, sure. They can't Hydroblast that. Manamorphose, gonna draw a card, hopefully. It does. Another sandstone needle. Okay. Mm, I kind of want them to fight over a Manamorphose instead of this Jessica's Will. We'll see if they kind of take it. Bonus round. That's pretty good. And I can still, I can still Seething Song um, or Jessica's Will as I see fit. Yeah, this one's getting stuffed. Okay, so they likely don't have a Hydro Blast because it would be much better to Hydro Blast a bonus round like that than try to Force of Will. I'm feeling okay about that. Uh, play them this turn. So I do need to make mana so that I can play the cards. Otherwise, I would only have one floating and that's not really the, the max that I want floating. We are really, really leaning into this just as well. Um, if it doesn't resolve, then that's unfortunate. But, oh, Day's Undoing. Oh, hello. Okay, so that didn't work out. Our opponent had a couple of forces. We could, um, could have beaten one, but not two. This Jessica's will is potentially very useful still. Uh, really good way to rebuild. And that defense grid, also a very good way to rebuild. Okay. That's just fine. You have three mana. I'm not gonna play the Jessica's will into an open three mana right now. Um, I wanna draw another card. Now, I could have been holding Sandstone Needle that I just played for uh, Horn of Harnfell, the Bergy flip side. Ooh, they don't have a fourth land. Prismatic Ending. Okay. Seething Song, Jessica's Will. They have two cards in hand. All right, it is time to Jessica's Will. 
We've got a mountain, a relay, and a burning wish. Hmm. So I can just relay for two and say goodbye to the burning wish. Mountain was not bad. Um, kind of wanted some more mana, but I don't think that burning the next Jessica's Will is going to find me that. So I'll go into my relay turn with four mana. I think that that's just going to be fun. And a relay turn. Relay turn. There's going to be two cards in this relay pile. And they are Inspired Tinkering. Not a bad start. And a Lotus Petal. Okay. You know, for two cards, that's pretty good two cards. Looks like my opponent has some interaction. I am under five minutes. I think that's fine. I've been kind of hanging out. Chatting. Okay. Um... Ride a flame here and then just Berkey. Not the greatest, but there we go. You know what would actually be really great to draw? Is it past in flames? Past in flames would be nice. I can't cast it yet. I'm one mana away from a past in flames, but it would be nice. And we are beating down for three for what it's worth. It's not insubstantial against a control deck that likely boarded out a lot of the removal. Obviously prismatic ending is still around. We've seen that, but I don't know. I'm gonna have to see about my internet connection and, and freezing or not. It is unfortunate. Okay, I'm going to pass the turn. No need to try to attack the Wandering Emperor and just have my Bergy removed when they can chump block. So that Lotus Petal is going to be plus one, man plus two mana, I guess. Oh, well, draw Hydroblast, sure. Okay, so l hopefully the actual YouTube video is not lagging as much and the recording that's happening is, is going to be a little bit truer to what should be the case, but I guess we'll see. Never really came into that problem before. Shark Typhoon. We are clocking now. ending. Yep. Riot of Flame. Not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, I do want a Past in Flames. I think that that's going to be the thing that 
has the most potential to draw me out of this game. Um, Ride of Flame is plus two mana right now. So I can Ride of Flame up to six. Past in Flames is four. Have two mana. Ride of Flame, Ride of Flame, Seething Song, Mana Morphoses, Jessica's Wills, all that good stuff. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. So we are one and two. Uh, a little unfortunate against a control deck that seems like it would be a reasonable matchup for bonus round Ruby Storm, but that's just fine. Now, if I were to play this in paper on uh, this Saturday, this Team Trio event, I wouldn't know what to do with myself. There would be so many different kinds of triggers to resolve, Bergy triggers to remember, bonus round triggers to remember, a whole ton of mana. But um, I at least am moderately prepared for it uh, because I have the really cool token pack that you can get on our website. It has the ability to keep track of storm and floating mana, and you can make goblin tokens and Ave Progenitor Ooze tokens. I was telling you a little bit about it before the round started, but I'm actually going to run a little bit of an ad to show you about the awesome token pack, uh, which I think is this one. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. So we are ready and queued up for our fourth round. We are one and two right now. Our opponent, if he dies, he dies, is going to be going first. I'm going to keep this double ruby medallion inspired tinkering hand. This seems like a really good setup if we can make it through to uh, casting all of these. And against a Flooded Strand Go, we might actually have time to do all of that. So, Sandstone Needle and Pass. What is our opponent doing in our end step? That's not very fun. Tropical Island. Brainstorm? What? And step brainstorm. Is this a combo deck? I don't know. We're about to find out, aren't we? Tundra? Control? Life from the loam. Yeah, this is like a four color Minsk and Boo Bant loam control kind of a situation. It seems like. The end step brainstorm is a choice. So let's try the ruby medallion. That resolves. Something tells me that that's going to get hit with the prismatic ending, but it's in for now. Hmm. Flooded Strand that we knew about. The other one is uh, that's another Flooded Strand. Yeah, Sea Bug. It is Stream Night. Absolutely. Oh, to Fairy. Okay. Bounce the Ruby Medallion. Draw back up to seven. Pass the turn. Okay, we'll take our turn. Another Ruby Medallion. Wow. Okay. I think that I'm going to play the other Ruby Medallion out. We have so much mana reduction. This Inspired Tinkering could be really, really good. Um, two mana, two mana Inspired Tinkering. Going to be fantastic. Uro, yep. Okay. 
put in a flooded strand that we know about. Okay. Polluted Delta. You know, actually playing out the other Ruby Medallion does play around a wasteland, which we assume that our opponent is playing some number of, maybe one, maybe two. These control piles typically don't leave themselves dead to things like uh, Dark Depths. Okay. So if I Rite of Flame, I've got four mana and can inspire Tinkering right now, or I can keep presenting Ruby Medallion, <clears throat> excuse me, Ruby Medallion shaped threats that require answers and then lean into an inspired tinkering at the end of this chain. So I think I'm most happy with that idea. We are gonna try to put a lot of relays on the stack, Seabug. Uh, we already have, as a matter of fact. They've been hit or miss. Some of them have been really, truly excellent, uh, made our opponents concede. And some of them have been uh, really mediocre, actually. Which is uh, unfortunate for a card that I love casting so much. Oh well. All right. They can play instance now. They're sorceries at instant speed. Whatever. This is a Minsk and Boo. This is a Minsk and Boo. A hamster is coming at our face. A little angry hamster. Look at him go. We got him. Ooh, this is fun. A little MTGO glitch. Uh, okay, Bergy, very good. Four cards in hand from our opponent. So I have a one mana Bergy. Actually, I have a one mana Bergy or a, what is that, a three mana horn? And I can discard this mountain. And then I have three mana to uh, play the Inspired Tinkering. Yeah, that's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Brainstorm, brainstorm away. Just think if we had three Ruby Medallions out, that would be insane right now. Um, two mana Horn of Harnfell would be just incredible. Okay, Force of Will. Pitching a Force of Will. Okay. Something tells me they might have another one. Nope. Oh, no! I miscounted. I won't concede. No shame concession here. Um, that's a little unfortunate. I really just uh, I just miscounted on the on the ruby medallion on the inspired tinkering. I saw that this was four, and I was like, oh, it's reduced by two, so that's two and ugh, sloppy. I wonder if our opponent is going to sacrifice Minsk and Boo to draw four cards. Nope. Okay. They're just going to clock in for seven. Okay. Well, with three cards in our opponent's hand, uh, Ponder chose not to shuffle, which is moderately terrifying. Um... Okay, well, now this has to work. My opponent is probably reading this card. And our opponent is also hard casting Force of Will. Okay. 
Well, I don't think that we were going to be able to do anything about that anyway, but it's a little unfortunate. Our opponent did have some pretty good hard cards. All right. I am glad that we're not having to board in Blast Zone. That's fantastic. Um, we are boarding in the same way essentially every time. Uh, inspired Tinkering and a bonus round for Defense Grid. Um, I could think about other ways to sideboard. I could keep in all of the bonus rounds and maybe sh sh like get a Desperate Ritual out of here. Um, I like the idea of keeping Sorceries in the sideboard. I still have access to more Inspired Tinkerings through Burning Wish, but maybe a Desperate Ritual is just fine. It's kind of how Ad Nauseam Tendrils boards um, Cabal Rituals out because you're expecting the game to go a little bit longer. Uh, graveyard hate aside, uh, I, sh I should say. You're expecting the game to go a little bit longer and you can sh shed a little bit of your less efficient mana producers. So, Desperate Ritual might be a, a good one. Yeah. Alright, let's try this out. Hmm. Alright, we've got Mountain, Ruby Medallion, Seething Song, Inspired Tinkering, Lotus Petal, Bonus Round, Seething Song. This is really good. Uh... If our opponent isn't interacting, and we draw an additional land or two. Is this worth keeping? That I'm less sure about. I'm going to say no. We are really reliant on finding an additional mana source. And once we do... Um, We really only have one shot. This is not protected or anything like that, which is not the worst thing in the world, right? Um, but I think I'm gonna mulligan this. It's a little, it's asking a little bit too much. This I will keep. Um, this I'm gonna keep and I'm going to um, bin. A bonus round. Yeah. Now is not the time for that. Our opponent has mulliganed to five. So we have an opportunity here. Our opponent has kept five and we're on our way. Move over here a little bit. Center. All right, now we have to wait for our opponent to allow us to get into our main phase so we can play a land and pass. There we go. You just have to complain about it and it works. That's how that works. <clears throat> All right. Flooded Strand into Tropical Island Ponder, Tundra Ponder, Island Ponder Keep. Where have I heard that before? mountain that's pretty good so I think it's just going to be a defense grid right now and then next turn I think that it's going to be okay force of negation that's fine uh, next turn we're gonna be we're gonna be doing a little bit more Manamorphos is a great draw. Okay, so we can Seething Song, Ruby Medallion, Bergy, Manamorphos, Relay. Yep. That's what the doctor ordered. Three cards in hand from our opponent.
Okay, they are fetching. I wonder wonder what's gonna happen here. An old fashioned counter spell. Dovin's veto. Yep. Okay. That's unfortunate. Mulligan to five. It was a pretty good mulligan to five. Mystic Sanctuary tapped. Uh okay. So let's play the Ruby Medallion. Dovin's Veto again. Wow. Our opponent's mulligan to five was pretty strong as far as anti-combo goes. And an Uro to reload. They're one green source away from putting a clock on to us, too. Two cards in hand from our opponent. Something tells me I am not going to be Jessica's willing. Uh, okay. Next turn, I think, is going to be a nice relay turn. Hopefully. We'll see. Um, our opponent has had the answer uh, every turn, so I hope that they are out of answers now. Oh, well, no, never mind. Spoke too soon. Uh, okay. Let's try it again. Uh, actually, should we Harnfell? This is going to be card advantage. This is going to be card advantage. So Bergy can be mana. I think that that's fine. I think that that's reasonable to me. And we will have to pass the turn. Uh, hopefully our opponent's four cards don't answer Bergy again. But wow, 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 wow! Hydra Blast. All right, <clears throat> what are we gonna do? We're gonna Manamorphose here. We Manamorphosing, and and Jessica's willing, I think. Let's see what the Manamorphose brings, at least. I convert a colorless into a red. Okay, so that's actually pretty good because at the very least I can still relay. This Jessica's will can go and oh my. Okay. All right, our relay. For five, as a past in flames, not bad. Bonus round, also not bad. Ruby medallion, Jessica's will, right of flame. Okay, okay, we might claw back. Hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, we have run our opponent out of resources. Uh, three Dovin's Veto, a Hydro Blast, a Force of Negation, and a Teferi Time Raveler, beg to differ. Um, bonus round again. Okay, let's start off with a Ruby Medallion. Okay. Uh, either way, this is going to be a choke point. We are, we are kind of stifled on red mana, so if our opponent does want to kind of shut us down, it is right now with a hard cast force of negation. Yep. Okay. Let's 
We still have a ruby medallion. They don't have a Teferi and we no longer have a ruby medallion. They don't have another green source, so they can't keep clocking. Red, that's good. Um, okay. I know that I, we are we are flirting with disaster with these ancient tombs, but I think that we can do nothing else. Um. I could Jessica's will right now and have two available mana, one colorless, one red. Or I could wait. I'm gonna wait. Hmm. Our opponent really said nope to combo. Uh, this has been a wild ride. Ponder, pretty good way to refill. Luckily, it does take them off of Uro this turn anyway. Um, chooses not to shuffle. You have a Prismatic and another Teferi. Sure. Are we doing this turn again? And a red mana? Okay, cool, 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 cool. Now we can bonus round. And Jessica's will. Nope, you got a force of will. Wow. Um, what did you pitch? I ponder. Uh, okay. Do I Jessica's will now? Nope. Their win con is Ancient Tomb. It absolutely is. Um, I don't think that City of Traders would be any better in this case, though. Um, it was something that was brought up in the deck tech portion of the stream was is is ancient tomb better than city of traders and i think so oh yeah yeah uh philip i don't know if our opponent necessarily recognizes that bonus round is um symmetrical but that's fine by me okay so i can ruby medallion off of uh, an ancient tomb I can Ruby Medallion off of mountains and be constricted on red mana. Or, and I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go for it. You know what? It's just gonna happen. Bergy. Okay. Well, how about we're gonna take the Harnfell. And our cards are going to be doubled now. So Harnfell takes the top of our library and turns it into two fresh cards. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. We are still in this at two life whatever that's worth um we have not taken a single point of damage from our opponent they have only been ancient tombs uh casting ruby medallions and burgies and recasting burgies and ruby medallions when they were bounced by teferi um fairly uh fairly aggressive in the tapping ancient tomb portion of this oh is this a meltdown oh okay it's just it's just lethal anyway. 
Ow. Uh, that was pretty brutal. That was that was uncomfortable. Um, our opponent had, I mean, we can see in our our opponent's graveyard, they had a little bit of everything. Uh, but O2, that was that was pretty rough. All right. Uh, so we are now dead for tying Bryant's record of 3-2. Um, but hopefully we can at least try to win a 2-3 get 50 play points back. But it's kind of brutal. Um, if you like what you're seeing, regardless of how the results are going, then you can support the uh, the stream and actually all of the videos that Bryant produces as well by becoming a YouTube member. You can see actually a couple of people are in chat already talking about uh, how brutal things are or how excited they are about stream and they're spamming chat uh, with awesome emotes like Galvanic Relay or Sadnaz or eh, it's mostly been Relay recently. Uh, Grape Shot, whatever you want to call it. We got awesome emotes and, and perks. You can catch videos early at any level and um, I know that Bryant has some really cool stuff that is in the pipeline that the public doesn't get to see, but all of the YouTube members do. Uh, some really cool tech um, in all kinds of stuff. I'm not gonna tell you, you gotta, you gotta check that out. But you can become a YouTube member and let me tell you a little bit about that. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsworm.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsworm.com slash donation dax that's enough for now let's play some magic Alrighty, so we are queued up for our last round of the evening um mayor of pendrel vale we're on the die we won the die rolls so we're gonna play first that's nice i'm gonna keep this pretty well-rounded hand jessica's will is gonna hopefully pay off and i wonder if we're gonna get our sandstone needle wastelanded on turn one uh, there's only one way to find out, isn't it? Play it and go. Hmm. We are waiting. We are waiting for our opponent. Um, while the ad was running, actually, I was checking on uh, notifications that I've gotten from stream, and yeah, I've dropped quite a few frames over the last, like half an hour ago, I had a lot of, a lot of dropped frames, so I'm going to have to check that out. No Wasteland, look at that. You love to see it. Um, do I want to start? just churning through things right now. I've got one, two, five, I can see five cards right now. And I've got five mana. So I would have two mana going into a Jessica's Will. Hmm. I can assume that they don't have Wasteland because they would have Wastelanded if they had it. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna Mana Morphose. We're gonna see what happens. What shakes loose? Ruby medallion would be perfect here as a draw. Bonus round. Uh, yeah. So that is gonna be really good. I'm a mana short of using it. Do I just stop now? I have four mana and I don't have a one mana ritual. So I can just stop now and I can have an insane next turn. Yep. Okay. It's settled.
And our opponent plays Savannah, Thespian Stage. Okay. Good stuff. The Sphere of Resistance in the main deck. Uh, well, there's our Anti-Sphere of Resistance tech. How about them apples? Now I have to remove this sandstone needle to play it. That's unfortunate, but that's the way the world works. Sphere of resistance in the main deck. Okay. We've been getting some uh, pretty anti-combo opponents this this league. We've got the blue-black reanimator, which is in itself a combo deck. But it's a Thoughtseize uh, Force of Will combo deck that preys on combo decks. Um, yeah, now it's just a sphere. It's just a ball. Bunch of angry, oops, bunch of angry goblins around it still, but maybe we can, well, we probably won't actually play Empty the Warrens against the the known this um, ta tabernacle of the Pendrel Vale player. Okay. So. Hmm. Our opponent can't dark depth right now. I could just deploy the Lotus Petal right now, which I actually probably should have done last turn. I forgot that Ruby Medallion isn't quite anti-sphere tech. So let me just play this out right now and um, go. If I draw an Ancient Tomb, that would be really good. Uh, another Ruby Medallion would be nice. Um, Our opponent is going to find a land. I don't know. Dark Depths. Okay. They are going to go for a quick 2020. That makes the most sense to me. Um, they've only cast two spells this game. Exploration and Sphere of Resistance. I'm always impressed with like just lands strategies in general. Um, who is this another Besaju? Something tells me this is a Besaju. Maybe not. Another sphere. Oh boy. All right. Uh, they can't make a Dark Depths. Um, and that was good. Except this costs uh, four. Yeah, and I don't have four. Well, that's poopy. Hmm. Yeah, I think they got me. We we drew the Ruby Medallion um, to make this another just sphere, uh, but we really ran into it this league. Um, okay, I don't think that I'm going to be able to beat that. What can I do? Blast Zone works really well, and I think that that's all. Uh, we're going to be trying to go fast. Going fast includes keeping all of the mana. Bergy, the Passion Flames, maybe is less good with uh, crop rotation into a Bajuka Bog. Uh, past and Flames can probably leave. Four mana on turn two is not going to do anything because the bonus round and Mana Morphos is five mana, and I don't have that. Uh, I'll mulligan this. 
this is really close. Um, I need a red mana, an initial red mana source. And once I have that, then Desperate Ritual is essentially a Dark Ritual. Manamorphose is essentially a Rite of Flame. Bonus Round is all good. Burning Wish. Okay, we're going to keep this. Put the Rite of Flame back. See what happens. All right, we're going to shake it loose, whatever it is. Our opponent is pondering their six. Um, we'll see. We'll see what they think. Who knows? Maybe it's a good one. Maybe it's not a good one. Um, Mulligans to five. It was not a good one. It wasn't good enough. Let's put it that way. And uh, see about their five. The problem is that we didn't get game one because of main deck sphere resistance. And um, that means that we're going to try to have to get game three on the draw. And that's going to be significantly more of an ask. So. See how this goes. Dropping about four percent of my frames right now. Um, it seems to have gotten a little bit better. Uh, chat, does it does it look a little bit better? Or is my is my stream my camera doing a better job at my internet working better? All that good stuff. I don't know. Mox Diamond, Seiju, Taiga, is this a Life from the Loam or a Sphere of Resistance? Life from the Loam, okay. So I do have to worry about this Ruby Medallion being removed. Red Source, oh my gosh, it's a Red Source. Look at that, okay. Desperate Ritual, I am indeed desperate. These pauses are having me, making me worried. Um, okay, so we can bonus round. Manamorphose. Nardolphin, hello. Okay. Let's see if this can work. Sandstone Needle, that's not important. Exile the top three. Let's see what that gives us. Exile the top three again. And we're going to the races, it looks like. Yeah. Uh, okay, now I can play Bergy. And an inspired tinkering. And yield to Bergy now. Three and three, okay. Right of flame, plus a right of flame. Uh, I can cast a ruby medallion, costs a one, I suppose. Um, now I can burning wish, which is actually free. And burning wish again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a Grape Shot and a Past in Flames. And this Past in Flames is going to let me rebuy Grape Shot. Oh. 
Same targets. I'm gonna take them to nine and then pass in flames, do it all over again. Okay. Click through all of this. Nice turn to kill. Yep. Oh yes, double flashback. That's always really nice. Uh, okay, and then we can grape shop them. Cool. Same targets, yes. And then all of the rest of it. Okay. We were, able to, we were able to take down lands, true old school lands, uh, in game two, and we're gonna go to game three and try it out again. Um, do I wanna change anything? They are a life from the loam strategy. I don't think that that's worth bringing Leyline of the Void in for um, at all. Now we saw Past in Flames was good there, but we didn't want it in our main deck anyway. We wanted it in our sideboard. So I think that we can keep the sideboard and main deck Past in Flames both in the sideboard uh, and try to go as fast as possible again, just like what we did. We just have to be a little bit faster next time because we're, uh, we're on the draw. Um, this is probably not good enough. I will keep this. I'm going to bottom a burning wish. And we'll see how aggressively they mulliganed to a sphere of resistance. No, nope. this is the same start they had in game one, and they creamed us in game one, so... Tides change, right? That's what's happening. Do I want to play the sandstone needle? Eat it to a wasteland? Uh, um... Or I could just play Mountain and be safe and just um, forego Sandstone Needle entirely. No, I think that what I want is for five mana. If I draw another mana, then I can double Jessica's Will. I think that that's what I'm going to do instead. I think I'm going to risk it. I am not in a place where I can play conservatively on the draw. There's a reason that my opponent kept their hand, and we're going to find out right now. And to be honest, it's probably Sphere of Resistance. So, we'll see. Hopefully, Yep, there's the sphere. Hopefully it doesn't come with uh, Wasteland. Oh, they didn't even have a second land, or a third land. Okay, well, this Bergy actually also... Um, oh yeah, the Yavamaya's out, that's cool. I actually can use it to um, still use the stand, Sandstone Needle if I need to. But this Bergy actually gets around the Sphere of Resistance as well. As long as I have the initial mana, Bergy is gonna make um, make up for it. Which is very helpful. All right, our, our opponent, Pithing Needling something. We have nothing to Pithing Needle in our deck at all. Is that right? Harnfell. We, they, oh yeah, we can activate Harnfell. Um, 
technically. Is there anything else? Um, I don't think so. We are really thinking about this pithing needle. Someone is doing a Google. A Google. There we go. I can speak. I promise. Someone is doing a Google. Uh, I think it's just Harnfell, which it's right here. I really don't actually need to Google it. I can just, you know, look at the card that's in play. You are already dead. Yeah, it's pretty close, isn't it? Um, I'm not feeling terribly comfortable with this right now. I think that we are we are in a, a state of the game that is on a knife's edge. If I find another way to use it, if I find a, a ruby medallion and can function as a cost reducer for the sphere, then I will feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, if they find Wasteland or Life from the Loam to rebuy these Urza Sagas and get that going, then it's not going to be great. But for now, well, for now we're waiting on this pithing needle and waiting and, and waiting. You would think that a mayor would know a little bit more about what to do in situations like this. But um, apparently the Pendril Veil is want for good leadership. Everywhere else presumably is too. Yeah. Um, but Pithy Needle is I don't know. Something. Our opponent did send us a message and, and they said, unfortunate misclick. Um, I don't know what they could have gotten otherwise. Um, expedition map, a uh, shadow spear, a uh, mox diamond. Really, um, I'm at a loss for how bad of a misclick that was. Uh, oh, okay. They named Wishclaw Talisman. You love to see it. That's fine. Oh, okay. They did have a land. Okay. So they should have gotten the expedition map and gotten then out uh, to Dark Depths. They didn't do that, though. We have a horn. If we uh, survive to next turn. What we can do right now is... Desperate Ritual. You know what? I think that it's going to just pass. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five. And I would need to activate the sandstone needle. That's fine. Um, I'm just going to swing in for three, which is a not insubstantial clock, I suppose. It's a Delver hit, right? Um, and I just, I need uh, another way to functionally reduce the cost of, of spells through this sphere. At the very least because of our hand, the makeup of our hand. Um, our opponent is playing a three drop, or two drop for three mana. Life from the Loam perhaps? It is Life from the Loam. Okay. And then they're playing the Urza Saga as their second land. And now they have an out to Dark Depths. I don't think that they're going to misclick a third time, or a second time, excuse me. 
Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Yeah, we'll float a green. Why not? Okay. So we're good on that front. Uh, we have Horn, Fell, and Bergy. Um, I sp I've been saying Horn of Harnfell. It's actually Harnfell, Horn of Bounty. Um, Harnfell is the name of the horn. But that's okay. They have found a wasteland. If they want, they they dredged life from the loam, and they found a wasteland, swords to plowshares, and a mox diamond. Um, swords to plowshares is going to be rough. Really, uh, really heads up play for our opponent. They have picked up the wasteland and they're going to play it. 